People of color continue to be disproportionately affected by COVID. Despite being only 7% of the Minnesota population, more than 14% of Minnesota COVID deaths are people of color. My next guest knows this all too well. In June of last year, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar lost her 67-year-old father to COVID. She is also making headlines right now for calling out Governor Texas Governor Greg Abbott and calling him a hypocrite for saying COVID uh, masking and vaccination is a matter of choice, but that an abortion is not a matter of choice for women. Joining us now, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, for coming in. Uh, those remarks about Greg Abbott are getting a lot of attention. Why did you put that out there? Well, I think it's really important for us to know that it is not a choice. It's not a personal choice for you to infect and cause the death of others. As you know, I lost my father uh, to COVID. My dad came back to the United States thinking that it would be safer here uh, than it was for him in Kenya um, to deal with the uh, COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. And he lost his life uh, because there were people who were making a choice um, that really put his life and the lives of others in danger. And I think that there is a difference between what a woman decides to do with her body um, in, in regards to whether she wants to, to carry a child or not. Uh, there are many uh, you know, decisions that go into that, um, which is very different than dealing with a public health pandemic and risking the lives of every single person that you come into contact with. I want to ask you about the Minneapolis police safety amendment, which would basically replace the Minneapolis Police Department with the Public Safety Department. Governor Walls has come in uh, against it, Senator Klobuchar against it. You are for it, and you wrote an op-ed about that. Why are you for this amendment? Yeah, I mean, I think it's for, there are two reasons, um, you know, that I would love to quickly just state. One is that this charter amendment uh, brings us to be the same as every other city almost in, in this state. There is no other city in, um, in, in, Minne in Minnesota that has a, a, required, a requirement of how many uh, police officers that you should have True, in regards have to their charter. But they do have police departments. So many of them, again, do not actually require a police department. They have public safety um, department required, and some of them don't actually have any of that. And the second part of that is that this charter amendment would actually give the opportunity for the city council and the mayor to uh, make decisions about who should respond um, when it comes to um, you know, disturbances that do not actually require the presence of uh, police uh, and allow for police to be able to investigate. As you know, nearly 90 percent of our homicides go unsolved in the city because there, there is a lot of distraction that is taking place. And I think it is really important for us to have the ability uh, to have control um, over what we decide to do in regards to public safety. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how this amendment does. A lot of division over that. Um, let's talk about line three. You are a member of the famous squad, and you brought most of the squad here to Minnesota to protest against the completion of line three. There are an awful lot of people in that area where the pipeline is being built who say they need it for jobs. Yeah, I mean, I, I reject um, you know, the, the false choice between jobs and protecting our planet. Um, the indigenous community, the, the Native American community and the tribes that I talk to um, uh, doing our visit uh, really are concerned about what happens when this pipeline um, impacts, right, uh, over a thousand acres of wetlands. It, it crosses over 211 um, bodies of water, including the Mississippi, and it risks, uh, you know, the, the health of all of our communities, regardless of whether you live in northern Minnesota or you live here. And we know that it's almost complete. There is no permanent jobs that are going to be created. And I think that it is really important for us to have a conversation about, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, choices that, that we are making and make choices that will create a sustainable planet for us. I want to ask you quickly about Afghan refugees. Before the show, we were chatting briefly, and you said that thousands, 5,000 
uh, Afghan refugees have reached out to your office for help. Have you been able to help any of them? Yeah, we've gotten over 5,000 um, inquiries, uh, people just calling all over, uh, from all over the country, um, truly trying to find a way and a path uh, forward. And we've been able to help hundreds um, of them. Wow. We currently have lots of active cases. You know, we remain um, in touch with a lot of people who have actually made made the choice to, to stay um, and we're trying to figure out how we can uh, try to help their families leave so that you know the the residents here in Minnesota can also come with them. Well that that's uh, remarkable and you uh, you told me that you thought it's because your name is out there and so so well that you're so well known. Well as a, as a former <laughs> refugee I think people think that they will find uh, sympathy in, in our office and we have been able to provide that. Well Congresswoman Ilhan Omar always a pleasure thank you so much for coming in. It's great to be here.